I have this little ammeter kit that I uh, purchased through eBay from this guy. Now, it's not a cheap kit. It cost uh, $13. It's what has become the average Chinese kit. There are no instructions, no schematic. Nice low profile socket. So the socket obviously will go on one side. And on the reverse side will go these four displays. And then that en entire thing will fit in this bezel. They're the only thing that would be soldered on this side of the board is these. However, the socket actually obscures this pin right here and So this row of pins on the socket are obscured by the display. You see this display fits very tight. It's actually up against the plastic. But I won't be able to put the socket in after these because I have to solder it. And I won't be able to put I won't be able to put the socket in because it fits. So there's gonna be a conflict. No matter how you look at it, there's gonna be a conflict. See what's happening there? So I'm not sure how to assemble this. I'm going to have to give it some thought. I did a little research on the web and I found and put together this information about the uh, ammeter kit. There was a schematic. I was able to find that. It is a one milliamp. It says it's going to be a zero to two amp. Then I found a bill of material. I didn't have to do anything. And then, now I highly edited it. Well, it was Chinglish. Everything here is pretty clear. These are resistors, okay. You know what they look like. These are capacitors, three ceramic capacitors. They refer to them as monolithic capacitors. Then two polypropylene, one polyester. Now here's the rub. This looking resistor thing is, like, is an inductor. We have two little three wire cases. One of these is an NPN transistor and one of them is a TL431 voltage reference. So you need to read the face of them and sort out what, which one's which. There's uh, four little glass diodes Three of them are common small signal diodes, one in 41-48, and one of them is a 5-volt Zener. So we'll have to look at those and decide which one's uh, the Zener. I'm going to have to do what they did to Blasphemous Bill Mackay or McKee, Mackay probably. Uh, that guy was frozen with his arms and legs sticking out. 
And when it came time to bury him, he didn't thaw well, so they had to saw. They cut off his arms and his legs and packed him into a coffin, and everything was fine. What I'm going to do is take this socket, and this is blasphemous. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to proceed to cut the socket into two pieces. Now I can install this socket. Solder all the pins on that side. So once I install this half of the socket, I can solder these. And these, having already soldered these, if I install this first, I can't do that. And if I install the socket first, I can't get to these. And you see, I can't get to these on the top of the board either because they're underneath the enclosure. So I got carried away and stuck some parts in. Um, I identified which was the transistor and which was the voltage regulator. Uh, voltage reference, rather. It's uh, down here. Transistor's up here. You can see it marks C1815. And this is the 5.1 volt zener. You can see it marks ZD zener diode 5V1. Well, these diodes, there's one regular diodes. And here is the uh, half of the socket that I installed. Now, be careful when you put these sockets in if you cut them in half to install them so these cut edges are facing each other. You don't want to install it this way. You want to maintain uh, the integrity of the socket. But now, with this row soldered, I can install the segments. Now you see how these tabs, these uh, legs from the socket stick up underneath the LED? There's not much clearance there. So what I'm going to do is just, I normally don't do this, but I'm going to just cut these off a little tiny bit protect your eyes when you do this. So there you can see it with the pins cut off. There's no chance of them piercing the bottom of the LED or causing it to you know, stick up. Now this segment had a casting defect on this on the other side up here and I could not get it to lay flat. This end was up like that. So I had a choice. I could have put it in this end of the row, had the defect sticking out here. But instead I just trimmed it off with a knife. You want these things all to be, see how that one's up a little bit? They need to be fairly flat across here and both of these legs should be seated tightly. So I'm going to solder them next. Now some of these holes don't have solder pads, so of course don't solder them.
Now, if I ever do this again, I wouldn't cut the socket in half. I would not put any of these components on. These are just in the way. Solder this half. Install the segments and solder them. Then install this half of the socket. Now trim these wires sticking up because they're going to stick up under the uh, big 40 pin integrated circuit. I have not put the uh, decimal point jumper in yet. There it is at zero amps. And here it is at 1.93. Let's turn it down once. The digital meter says uh, 0.214. That you can't beat that. Here's 0 0.0667. So that's perfect. This may look like it's an 8, but it, it's a 6. So this is fine. And I don't know if they sell a voltmeter to match it. But just by leaving off the shunt resistor and putting something in series with it, you can make it into a voltmeter. I sat down at the bench and built this little kit. It took me virtually no time at all. The last thing I'll do is turn it over and just do a close-up of it. This is called VR1 in the uh, bill of materials. This is the inductor. There's only one. L1. Here are these little yellow things are, the, are ceramic or what they call a monolithic capacitor. There are three of them and they all are different values. This is a polypropylene capacitor as is the one next to it. They are different values. Electrolytics. This is the zener that I showed you before. This is just a regular small signal diode here and here. This is our shunt resistor, 0.1 ohms, R5 it's called. Uh, we got some more resistors here. Okay, this is the uh, voltage reference, and it's called U2. This big thing's U1, by the way. Just make sure that it, the red wire is here. If you install the jack backwards, J2, you'll have to correct for it. As J1, you can see it says so. It's the input jack, the measuring jack. This is a power supply jack. Anything else tricky here? Oh, this capacitor is a polyester capacitor. So we have some ceramic or, or monolithic capacitors. We have two polypropylene and we have one polyester. If I did it correctly the resistors all read from left to right or from bottom to top. This is a 100 ohm resistor. Nice thing is, it, is that the silk screen is marked with the value of the device and it's uh, they call it a code in the bill of materials. It's, it's parts designation. And this particular one is R3. So here we have R3. 
and it's a 100 ohm. And so on, the whole way across. So, uh, I'll leave you staring at the uh, ammeter kit. I have yet to install the jumper for the decimal point. And if you uh, enjoyed this kind of video, or building something from parts kits, uh, subscribe to my site. Certainly gives give me a oops, disturbed the picture. <coughs> a thumbs up. Uh, drop me a comment. Certainly come back. Thank you.